How's it going everyone? This is MedCat, and today we're going to be talking about Hess's Law, and more specifically, how we can look at problems that involve Hess's Law and solve them efficiently and quickly on our MCAT exam. So feel free to pause the video right now and take a look at this practice question that I've derived from real double AMC problems. Alright, so now that you've taken a look at the question, let's see how we can actually solve it. One of the confusing parts is we've gone from two reactions to one, and we've also kind of switched up the order. So how we go about this is we identify what reaction we ultimately want to solve for. In this case, it's going to be our A to C. Now to write this, we have to write A in the reactants. And to do this, we flip around B to A to A to B. Similarly, we know that C has to be in the products. So we can flip around the second equation, going from, instead of C to B, B to C. So we flipped both of our equations. Now, if we add both of these reactions up, we'll see that the B's cancel out because they are on both sides of the chemical equation, just as if we were solving a mathematical equation. And what we're left with on the left side of the reaction is A, and what we're left with on the right side of the reaction is C. So our reactant A is moving to product C. Now this is most of the battle in Hess's law problems. Now that we've figured out how exactly we can rearrange the equation to find our final equation, or equation of interest, we now start looking at our Gibbs free energy that we are given here next to each of these initial reactions. So let's make a column with delta G naught and start writing in our values. Now we have to be careful with how we write in our values for this. Delta G naught will actually be flipped in sign from positive to negative or negative to positive every time we flip the reaction. And in this case, we flipped both of the reactions. So B to A, we flipped from A to B. So we need to flip that negative to a positive. So previously it was negative 4.9 kcals per mole, but now we need a positive 4.9 kcals per mole. Similarly, we had C to B, but now we flipped it to B to C. So now it's going to be negative 12 kcals per mole. Now, just like we added up the chemical equations, we can add up these delta G naught or Gibbs free energy changes of our reaction. And by simple arithmetic, this will give us negative 7.1 kcals per mole telling us that this is indeed a spontaneous reaction and we are releasing exactly 7.1 kcals per mole of energy when we run it. Therefore, our correct answer for this problem is B. Now before we finish up, I'd like to mention that Gibbs free energy, this delta G naught of our reaction, is not the only thing in which we can use Hess's law. We can also use it with delta H naught which is enthalpy. Now enthalpy problems, especially with Hess's law, are sometimes specific to something called the delta H naught F, or heat of formation. Now the heat of formation of a particular reaction can be calculated by the delta H naught F of products minus the delta H naught formation of our reactants. And while I think that equation is generally useful, on the MCAT, I think it's best to fall back on rewriting our equation so that things cancel out and then flipping the signs, if we have flipped the equation, that is, to figure out our ultimate heat of formation in a reaction. So while I think that equation is useful, it's probably not something you're going to think about in the heat of the moment on the MCAT. And finally, we can also use this for our change in entropy, or delta S naught. That's it for today's MedCat video. 
Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out my comprehensive amino acid playlist, which can be found in the link in the description below.